Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. Good evening, everybody, and uh, many thanks to Simon and Alex there at Share Talk. It's a pleasure to have this opportunity to, to talk about Caracal Gold, and in particular, talk about the uh, the new gold project acquisitions that we've mentioned in a number of the uh, RNSs that the company's put out since listing in August, and also how through those acquisitions, we really are going to deliver on an East African gold strategy, which is going to see us grow significantly in the coming months and years, both in terms of production, number of assets, operations, development projects, and resources as well. And, and we hope that for all our investors and shareholders, that's going to have a major impact on the share price and the performance of the company as we move forward. So I'll just run through this presentation for you. And then at the end, I know there's some questions which have come in from some of the shareholders. I'll go into them and um, also hope that addresses any, any comments or, or matters that you've identified in the company's performance in recent months. Okay, as, as you know, Caracal Gold, we're listed there in London on the, uh, the main board. And our operation, main operation here is in Kenya. It's the Kilimapesa gold mining and processing operations, a fully permitted, fully operational uh, underground mine, which has approximately 400 employees, of which over 98% are drawn from the local communities there, there in, in Kenya and in the Masai Mara region. As I said, established, we're producing, we've got over 670,000 ounces of, um, of gold resources. And for us, our, our future growth is going to come both from, from that operation, which is the cornerstone. It's what we've started this business on and something which we felt had tremendous growth opportunities. We're going to increase production there. We're going to increase resources um, through production, through exploration, but we're also going to be looking at the acquisition of further, very advanced, near-term and producing assets in East Africa. And when we talk about East Africa, we're talking obviously about Kenya, because there are some very complementary and strategically located assets there in Kenya, but also in neighboring Uganda, Tanzania, and some of the other countries close, to, close there as well. We are going to be looking at the acquisition of producing and those near-term producing gold mines, projects with infrastructure, and where we feel that what we've achieved at Kilimapesa over the past year in terms of transforming that operation, we can do again. You know, we've, we've had an ability where we've brought both management and capital into Kenya here, and we've invested it into an operation such as Kilimapesa that had been starved of capital and starved of a really dedicated and focused management team. And I hope that you can see already from, from some of the releases that we've put out that we are able to turn around projects, typically unlocked projects, and unlock the inherent value in them. A lot of that comes, I must admit, from being on the ground, both the corporate and management teams. And uh, we're here, we're based here in Kenya, we're based here in Africa, we were able to travel quite significantly in and around the regions. I've, I've recently been in Tanzania, as, as many of you may know. And by having that, that really gives us what we think is first mover advantage. Yeah, you know, we're not the first into those jurisdictions by any means. But what we can do is when we see an opportunity, we're there on the ground negotiating face to face with with the owners, with the stakeholders. We're not dealing with intermediaries. We're not sitting in our air conditioned offices back in in London or Perth or, or Vancouver, Toronto, you know, waiting for an advisor to bring these projects to us. We're out there. We're doing our own due diligence. We're getting our hands dirty. We're, we're walking the ground, we're, we're going underground, and we're really getting to grips with what really is, in our minds, um, going to be some good opportunities for the company. When we look at these projects, what are we looking for? Um, advanced projects, clearly. Proven gold districts, ones where we feel there is an ability to, and there's a proven and demonstrated ability to, to get assets into production. But clearly, they've got to fit into our, our location, based here in Kenya, a regional hub in East Africa, and um, particularly with our Kilimapesa mine being located so close to that Tanzanian border as well. So we're looking for those complementary jurisdictions and where we can leverage off of the logistics and management teams that we have on the ground. Again, it's very conventional 
operations we're looking at here, both open pit and underground, ones where we can actually add value very quickly. As I've said, Tanzania and Uganda are two immediate and key areas of focus by the management team. We've all operated and, and, and worked in those countries, ran mines, um, acquired assets and brought them back into production. So that's our immediate focus and that's where we think we can bring value particularly to the, to the company and to the shareholders here. We all know the, um, the company um, listed there, GCAT, market capitalization of about 18 to 20 million at the moment. I think we're trading on average about 20 million shares a day, so a fair bit of liquidity. Um, in particular, I think we've seen that um, come off a bit in, in the recent uh, week or so, and I think that's across the board. Uh, there's clearly been, if you look at the major indices, all performing well, um, globally but i think if you get to the grips and you start looking at the junior junior sectors in particular uh, there's been a fair bit of money taken off the table from companies that have done well and i think we're, we're one of them since listing three months ago but i think we've got a, a good platform for further growth um, certainly before the end of this year and well into 2022 um, we've got quite a, a tight capital base there with a fair bit of interest out of out of europe and particularly germany and, and management are very much um, motivated to make this work given the large shareholdings that, that we hold. You've, you've seen the management team, and I think it's one which we're very proud of, and we've come together and worked very closely over the past 12 months, in particular here in Canada, in Kenya. Um, Simon, Robbie, Jared, and obviously myself, um, a, close new, a close group of uh, people that are working with each other each and every day um, here in East Africa. Uh, Robbie driving the operations as the managing director, the CEO, and has done a tremendous job up there. And, and look, let's face it, we're now responsible for over 400 full-time employees on the operations. So a lot of responsibility falling on him, um, but also falling on all of us as well. Some of the operations guys, Mark, Nico, Gordon, and Innocent, driving all the key constituent parts of that business. It's important to note that they are also involved when we're looking at these new projects. So um, they're from, from a metallurgy point of view, from a projects point of view, how quickly can you get things moving? How can you deal with the, the key stakeholders? So that core management team is across all of it, but it's growing all the time, uh, that's for sure. And just to show exactly what we're, we're focused on as a management team, you saw us get involved at Kilima Pesa. Um, as a group, we got involved back in August 2020, uh, right in the, the grips of the, uh, the COVID situation. We came out to Kenya, we got the operation back up and started within, within a month. And that, that required a major refurbishment and, and upgrades to the processing plant, likewise to the underground mine. And from historical plant throughputs of just over 100 tonnes per day, you know, we've got that up several times and consistently, and we're going to increase that further. So that's something which we think will put us in good stead as we move into other projects in neighbouring jurisdictions. You've seen our increased exploration activity. We've, within, within three months of listing, we've acquired two rigs, both are up on site, and believe me, it's no mean feat um, moving draw rigs around Africa in, in the current environment, clearing customs and getting it up on site and literally ready to drill. And we, we own two of these rigs now. And it's important to recognize the flexibility that that gives you, um, major cost savings and the opportunities as well. So we're very excited about having those rigs there. The team that we put together and that's a team that, that drilling team is one which will be obviously heavily focused here at Kilimapesa in Kenya, but has the scope to get involved with these rigs going cross border elsewhere in Kenya to basically prove up other resources as and when required. So it's a great asset and, and something which I think may be slightly underestimated at the moment. And of course, the end game for all of us, it, it's revenue, it's generating revenue, creating profits. And, and looking down the track in a year or two's time when with an, a series of multiple operations, we will be in a dividend paying situation and, and can start returning to shareholders, not just through the, um, the big capital growth that we hope to see, 
uh, and appreciation in the share price, but also in using those profits to, to reward shareholders who have supported us in our business. Okay, so that's a bit about what we're doing. Our pure East African goal focus is clear for all to see. Kilima Pesa, obviously, at the at the heart of, of our company at the moment. And it's one which we think will remain there. And particularly as we grow those resources to north of 2 million ounces to, um, to, to increase production there. And we've already set those targets of initially going over 1,000 ounces a month, then over two, and, and getting up there over 50,000 ounces uh, as quickly as we can. Clearly, you can see Africa, we're busy looking at numerous targets. Two of them I've just put on this chart here to give you an indication um, in neighboring Tanzania. A project there, which is of, of significant interest to us, where there's been development studies, extensive drilling, reserve resources in place, um, where they were looking at a, an operation producing between 50 and 75,000 ounces per annum over a plus 12 year mine life, and where there's, you know, substantial opportunity in our minds for us to come in and basically kickstart that operation and take it through to production. Another one very close to that, uh, more of an advanced exploration asset, but significantly enough, just a long strike from the first, one where there's existing resources and an ability to add further satellite operations to it. So that's just two of many assets which we've been looking at which we're close to finalizing and which I think of, of, of note are things which we've actually been on the ground, we've walked it, we've met with all the stakeholders, both the, the owners, the communities, the uh, local government, the, the national government. So we're, we're very busy. We've been doing a lot of work in the background. Clearly with the acquisitions, we were looking to have completed this week, and we're a hair breadth away of uh, getting close to this. So, you know, things things take a little bit longer in these these times, but uh, we're focused and we're very close, and we will be very soon announcing um, our first two acquisitions to come into the group and expand expand this business. I talked earlier on about first mover management advantage, and I, I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, one of the things I think shareholders will be asking themselves when we announce our acquisitions is, how have we managed to get these acquisitions? How have we been able to negotiate them on such advantageous terms? And why has nobody else been able to secure these assets? I think that's, that's some of the key things and obvious questions when shareholders see just the sort of deals we've done. And part of that, like I say, comes from us being here on the ground, a management team that really is focused here. No distractions. Um, we've got no football to go to at the weekend. We're here. We're working Saturdays, Sundays, and we, we really want to grow this business. We've got a, an existing and very extensive network throughout Africa, not just here in East Africa. Um, we're identifying new projects, and we're getting out and seeing them. And people are seeing us doing that. And that makes it very, very advantageous for us because people are seeing us as a preferred partner, one that they know will actually take things seriously. Seriously. So one, as I've said there, that's already demonstrated we can get a project going, that we've already demonstrated that we're happy to be here on the ground and doing things. So that strong local presence and... I think a very good ability to work with communities, with stakeholders, um, providing local employment in these tough times has put us in a great position. You've got to remember that when we first came here in, in August at Kilima Pesa, there was barely 10 people working there, managing that through the care and maintenance period. Over the past 12 months of being here on the ground, we've increased that to more than 400 people uh, at a time when COVID has just decimated local, local employment opportunities. So we have four, over 400 full-time employees. The knock-on, the multiplier effect from that is one full-time employee is responsible for seven or eight people, uh, family members. So that's two and a half to 3,000 people that, we're, that are dependent upon the successful uh, continued operations at Kilima Pesa. So we get a lot of benefit from what we've done and what we're demonstrating on the ground. And as we've shown from the, from the exploration 
programs that we're pushing ahead with and the drilling programs, we're employing locals. We've got a whole Kenyan drill team there, uh, which are going to be employed going forward now on not just the first diamond and RC drill program, but many, many more to follow. We've got some experienced uh, drill hands that have come in with the rigs. They're there not on a full-time basis. They're there to train people up and you know, give people the skill sets to basically take this and run this here as a Kenyan-based, Kenyan-operated drilling business. So, yeah, we're very proud of that. And that, you know, people see that. So it, it's, it's something of note and something which gives us an advantage on the ground, which you really can't underestimate. I think being here, seeing things firsthand and being able to basically get in front of people, not just through a screen like we've, we've got today, but getting in front of people and, and negotiating and, and looking them in the eye, you just you still can't beat that. So the new gold project acquisitions we're looking at, just to put a bit more flesh on them, look, we're looking to acquire up to 100% of, of companies that are holding these assets. And we're in negotiations with a number of parties, as we've mentioned already in, in RNSs. Ones that own multiple or hold multiple exploration and, and mining licenses. So assets where a large amount or large degree of the regulatory risk has been removed already. You know, assets that have or are been are operating or where there's been substantial historical exploration and, and, and studies, be they pre-feasibility or feasibility studies. And there are, there are these projects here. And, you know, many have been lost in, in recent years as mining companies have tended to focus more on, on West Africa um, rather than, than Tanzania and, and Kenya, which really is not high on priority list of, of investors from a mining perspective, purely because there hasn't been that focus in the past. I think that's going to change very quickly. You've obviously got uh, aimlisted Shanta that are doing uh, wonders here in Kenya with their drilling program up there at the old barrack asset. So I think you're gonna see a bit of a transition there. A lot of these assets we're looking at have sat in listed companies and we do benefit from the historical work that they've done. Companies both in the UK, Australia and Canada. So we're, we're getting projects which have NI43101 or, or JORC compliant resources, scoping studies, PEAs, pre-feasibility studies. So we're benefiting a lot from this. But more importantly, with a lot of these, these assets which we're looking at, we're getting you know, established infrastructure in place. So again, we're not going to a greenfield exploration where you've got to spend a lot of shareholders capital uh, building a presence. We're going in and we're acquiring something which in our mind, we've got a running start. You know, so we're straight into it. We're not gonna be sitting there um, waiting for permits to be issued or, or waiting for any, other, any number of things. We're actually on the ground immediately. And I think once we're able to announce some of the acquisitions we're, we're, we're finalizing now, you'll see us on the ground straight away. You know, as well as the direct acquisitions, what we're also looking at is some commercial agreements with, with local, um, local groups, local companies, where because they're more established, there is an opportunity to invest additional capital to secure those project interests and to benefit directly from a revenue share, from a profit share. And again, that's something which we're, we're actively pursuing and looking at there. From a high level point of view, look, these acquisitions, what are we looking at? Typically acquisition costs are between $3.50 and $7.50 per resource ounce. So very, very competitive when you compare that to the costs of acquisitions in West Africa, Australia, uh, even North America. So when you're, you're valuing exploration companies on, on valuations of up to $50 an ounce, you know, we're getting some very good transactions uh, close to getting across the line at the moment. So that's the sort of numbers we're looking at. And those acquisitions typically are going to be done on share-based um, consideration. We don't want to put cash into, into vendors' pockets. We want to put cash into the projects to advance them further. So when we are doing these acquisitions, we, we want them aligned. We want them to align to the success, and we want them locked in for a minimum period of 12 months. We want to see them actually follow 
and be actively supportive of us doing that work as we take those projects forward as shareholders. So we're not going to be looking at major dilutive um, fundraisings to secure these. We're being smart about things and we're looking at attracting the right sort of shareholder base with the projects we're looking to acquire. So when we look at the sort of fundamentals here, these projects which we've identified, which we've shortlisted, where we've completed in many cases 99 to 100% of all the required due diligence, um, you know, we're looking there at delivering on that strategy. The acquiring of advanced projects that give a clear path to grow both production and resources at the group level and at that project level. Kilima Pesa has done that for us already, but there's an opportunity there to supplement that with new mine development in close proximity to its operations and just across the borders in neighboring Tanzania and Uganda. Those acquisition costs, as I said, very competitive and you'd be hard pushed to see many, many like that um, in Africa or in the more developed mining uh, jurisdictions such as North America and Australia. What we're looking at it from a resource perspective as well is a very rapid growth. Clearly our exploration activities in Kenya, we're very focused there on getting the resources over 2 million ounces. And that's something we're very confident of given the previous CPR studies that were done. But from an acquisition point of view, it really does give us an opportunity in almost a three-step uh, approach to very quickly move to get our group resources over that million ounce level. That mark is a major one for, for certain investors. They wanna see that you've got a million ounce resources. That's something we should be able to achieve very, very quickly. We'll follow that up for going very quickly to the one and a half, to the two. And we're looking at doing that within the next three to six months. You know, our investment is gonna be in those exploration assets um, and getting those resources there but it's also, and more importantly, focused on optimizing some existing operations and updating studies where projects were taken through to pre-fees or feasibility study, but where perhaps where we've already looked at it, we feel there is a better way of doing things. And we're looking at very conventional open pit underground operations, typically each producing at that 50,000 ounces per annum level. So. That's not a pipe dream. That's something which the team here has been very focused on and working at how we are going to deliver on that. And we believe that what we've got in front of us, um, very close and very much in front of us, will achieve that. Um, when we look at our land holding, and it's not just about land banking, but East Africa is going to become increasingly sought after from a jurisdiction, from a mining investment point of view. You saw in the late 90s, early 2000s, how how much investment Tanzania attracted in its gold sector. Um, there's been a period recently where obviously there's been a, a dearth of, of investment in Tanzania. That's changed very quickly. And we feel that with some of the transactions we're doing now, where we're getting quite significant um, packages of exploration and mining licenses, that will also be of very strategic importance as people move away from West Africa because of the the increased political risk that you're seeing there because of that increased competition, which is making a lot of acquisitions you know, incredibly expensive. So East Africa, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda will become increasingly sought after in the coming years. And I think the work that we're doing at Kalima Pesa operationally and um, from an exploration point of view, as well as groups such as, as Shanta Gold, will just continue to, to demonstrate just how attractive an area this place is. As I said, our growth will come from acquisitions and these will support that um, in parallel with the exploration that we have in, in Kenya. These acquisitions, you'll, you'll see them announced very, very quickly, will clearly show exactly where we're trying to get, get to. Getting our resources up above 2 million ounces through acquisitions and also through another 2 million ounces through, um, through our exploration activities. So that's a, a significant growth um, purely on the resources. Land holdings, we're looking at, at an initial level of increasing our mining licenses and exploration licenses by over 700%, um, both in area and number. Resource drilling to increase, updated development studies to follow, 
and optimization of a number of these projects to, to commence as well. So yes, we've been very busy over the past three months getting Kilima Pesa up and it's gonna to continue to go up. But we've also got to run in parallel with that with the management team, um, the ability to bring in other projects through acquisition um, and smart acquisitions. And I think that's what we've been focused on. And that is certainly what we're gonna deliver on. That's the discussions there on the, on the new project acquisitions. And we hope very quickly to be able to announce them to the market. We're very excited by them. We think they are of significant value to the company. Shareholders will, will and should be impressed by what we've, we've been doing in the background uh, behind Kilima Pesa in, in recent weeks. And um, we believe that we'll be able to get a lot of regional support for them, which is why we're, we're also in parallel with this, progressing our Nairobi Securities Exchange listing. That was something we were hoping to have completed by now. There's been some additional regulatory requirements that we've had to submit as part of that process. Uh, it's fair to say that the team at the Nairobi Security Exchange is chomping at the bit to get us on the boards. Um, we bring a whole new asset class. There's no listed mining companies on the Nairobi Exchange. There's, there's no, no real resource-focused junior company that's looking to, to grow its, its business so aggressively uh, like us. So from the chief exec of, of the exchange all the way down, there is a lot of people there that are supporting us in getting that, uh, that listing going. Uh, advisors, FADA Investment Bank here, again, doing some tremendous work. And we're hoping that post the Christmas break, that listing will proceed very, very quickly. And um, you'll see us trading here in, in Kenya as I believe the second only dual listed company between London and, and Nairobi. And it, it's something which the local business sector here is, is focused on and, and keen to see. And that I believe in the coming years will add significant support to this growth strategy uh, here in Kenya and, and throughout East Africa. So that's the, uh, the, the presentation there on the new project acquisitions and why we feel it's gonna significantly enhance the company, strengthen our position in the region and allow us to deliver on our strategy of, of significant growth over the next three, six, 12, 18, 24 months. So thank you for, for, for listening in. And um, I'd advise that over the coming, coming week, and weeks, you uh, you look out for the RNSs from the company. There's going to be a number, um, a fair few actually, which will uh, certainly set out exactly what we're doing and how we're going to deliver on that. Thank you. Okay, if it's um, okay by everybody now, I'm going to just answer some shareholders and investor questions which have come through. Um, we were supposed to have Zach Mur here asking the questions and um, basically being the compare, the host. Unfortunately, he's been he's been tied up, not literally, but he's he's busy running around the streets of London. He'll be um, back. I think we've got another interview with Zach in a few weeks' time, so we'll have an opportunity to talk with him then. But he sends his apologies. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll I'll run through. We've got about a dozen questions here. And I'll, I'll quickly go through all of them. No issues answering the questions. Um, as you know, we maintain a very transparent and open approach to what we're doing. So um, we'll get straight into it. Uh, first question, we've been listed now for around three months. How, how do we see the progress we've made in this short time frame? Look, three months has, has flown past. You know, it, it took quite a while to get the, the, the company up and listed and you know, going through that regulatory process with the SCA was was quite a, a tough one, but rightly so. Since listing, we've we've put out a number of updates on on the performance of the company, the um, the improvements operationally, both in the mine and, and the process plant, cost as well. Uh, we've also updated on the exploration activities, uh, the arrival of the drill rigs, and the our planned exploration programs. So. I guess as a management team, we would have loved to have done more. I'll be honest. We all would have loved to have done more. We're all very aggressive and very keen to, to deliver. And I think 
you know, looking back, you know, we, we got the power switch over to di from diesel to, to mains power. That was something we were very, very, very pleased with in, in how quickly that went. Um, the drill rigs, we got them up on site ahead of schedule um, and operating uh, very quickly. You know, we've got a drill team in place. So I think, look, we've, to a large degree, again, we're, we're, we're reasonably happy with the progress. We always want to do better. That's, that's the key thing. We w would have loved to have been listed on the Nairobi Exchange by now, trading and, and getting more regional support. We would love to have um, been able to announce one or two of the acquisitions. But I think to a large degree, yeah, we're reasonably happy with what we've achieved operationally. It's been disappointing, I guess, to have seen the, the share price rise so well, um, up close to, to two pence per share, but then come off as it has done in recent weeks. Yeah, that hurts. That hurts all of us. We, we don't like to see that, particularly given some of the stuff which, which we've delivered on in the meantime. But always room for improvement, no time to sit back and slap yourself on the back and, and so on. It's just more hard work, more of the same. So I think, yeah, you know, I'd give us a B, but um, as your teacher would have said at school, always room for improvement. Um, the next question, two drill rigs were acquired, mobilized to site. Are we going to be updating on the, on the drilling program and how long is it going to take? Look, clearly we're going to be putting out updates on uh, the drill results as and when they come through. Um, that's, that's, that's an obvious, that's a gimme. Um, you'll see that, um, you'll see the progress through our social media platforms. You'll see the drill rigs drilling. You'll see the activities on ground. But all the material news in regards to the results from the assays, et cetera, they'll be released through those, those um, through the RNSs. We've said already that the, the initial program, Diamond Drill Program, uh, the 16 holes there at Kilimapesa Hill on the mining license, that'll all be completed by the end of the first quarter, uh, 2022. So we're moving very quickly on that. And the, the drilling won't stop. There, that all moves straight straight on and do additional drilling. So that's just the first 16 hole, roughly 3,000 meter program there, to improve the confidence of the of the resource reserve there at Kilimapesa, and also to increase that. You would have seen as well the second rig has moved already to the southern mineralized zone, an area which has become of increased interest for us, extending over 70 over seven kilometers, and where one of the trenches was running 40 meters at close to five grams a ton. So we'll be putting out those updates. Um, getting assay results back is not gonna be too too hard. We've got, the, as we've said in one of our announcements, we've had uh, all our on-site facilities um, prepared and up to the standard necessary to meet all the QA, QC obligations to report under, under JORC. So, during that first quarter of next year, one of the other questions was how quickly are we going to get the assay results turned around? Look, we will be res we're not going to res release results whole by whole. You know, we've got to take them in context. We've got to do the analysis and we've got to make sure that, that it makes sense. So towards the second half of the, the first quarter of 2022, that's when you'll start seeing some of the news flow there from, from those drilling results. Um, one of the other questions are, you know, we're already producing gold. Do we think that the, the markets have picked up on the company? Um, look, we're producing gold. We're not a major producer of gold at this stage by any stretch of the imagination, but we are a producer. And I think we need to continue to demonstrate an increased level of production and a stabilized cost base to get more market interest. Um, we're in a very extensive period of investment in our operations. All the capital which we're, all the free cash flow, all that capital, extra capital is going back into the operation. So I think we put out an, an operational update for the month of September, the, the final month of that quarter when we were listed. And we put in our costs, total costs, not just all in sustaining costs, but everything. Um, and we were making money then. And that was basically after spending pretty much everything we generated. So, you know, we're going to continue to do that because there are opportunities for us to increase revenue and to increase margins um, and profits in the short to medium term. But that requires us investing the cash flow which we're generating at the moment, and we'll continue to do, do that.
Um, and I think once we've done that for a num for another two, three quarters, then the market's really going to sit up and say, oh, actually, these guys, you know, they're making money, they're producing gold, they're selling that, um, and they're actually growing their business. So I think that's when you will see a lot more interest here in our, our um, production facilities. Questions from shareholders, and we receive this quite a lot. You know, what share price do they feel that we're is, is true value, and where we are given the current progress? Look, we're very fortunate. We had a very detailed uh, initiation report by UK-based VSA Capital. Uh, their their head of research there, Ollie, put out a, a thirty-plus page review of our operations. Um, valued us, I think, at 3.3 pence just based on what we've got and with some very conservative assumptions. Um, look, I think that's fair value to start with. I'm not going to argue with with one of the UK's well-established research analysts. Um, he also says that if we got over a million ounces there at Kilima Pesa, we're probably worth over five, five and a half pence, 5.6 pence. Um, we've already got 670,000 ounces, so not far to go. But... You know, getting up there, it, it's it's small steps for us. So let's get to two, let's get to three, four, and five. Um, we clearly have not got involved in this company because we think it's a three pence or a four or a five pence stock. You know, all the management team here um, have taken their they are aligned to this business. So as major shareholders are. Our upside comes from making this work and getting that share price up. And we're focused on doing that by getting this working operationally. Um, another question, a lot of the overhead cost reductions have been put in place from, from what we put out in recent news releases. How well positioned are you going into 2022? Look, one of the critical ones was that change over from diesel generated power to, to mains power. And I think we we well, we set out that that was cost savings of about hundred dollars an ounce. Now that that's a significant cost savings. So we're we're continuing to look at how well we can um, manage our costs. And I think as we increase our production base, then those costs are naturally going to reduce there. So overheads we're continuing to employ. We're continuing to grow the business. I think we're pretty well placed for 2022. And I think, you know, the first two quarters, still a period of extensive work on site. And then into the second half of the year, that's when you'll really start to see some great um, numbers, hopefully coming out of the operations. Um, question on, on, I guess, our, our community initiatives and uh, our focus on employment from the local um, surroundings. The upcoming diamond drilling and RC drilling programs, you know, we've employed a, a fully local team from the communities at Kilimapes in Logorian in Narok County. Um, is that one of our mission statements? Absolutely, 100%. Committed to that, we have over 98% drawn from the local communities. <coughs> Excuse me there. We have over 98% drawn from that local community, and that will continue. You know, I think if you look at it, Everybody here in, in Kenya, bar me, is African, um, operating, at our, our, operating at our mines. Robbie, South African, Mark Green, South African, a number of the plant expats that we have are Zimbabweans. We've got members of our finance team from Uganda. So we are an African company. And um, my home here is now certainly in Nairobi, so I'm quickly getting there. So we are very much focused on the communities, on ensuring that our employment comes from those communities. We've recently started an internship for geology students, and we will be drawing geology students from, from the local universities, graduates, to come and work for us at Kalima Pesa. That, I'm sure, in the very short term, will extend on the mining side, on the processing side, on the finance side. We've, we've got to be there. We've got to be involved in uh, transferring skill sets, improving education, and working with the communities, not just in giving them jobs, but also putting other things back into the to those communities, improving literacy levels, improving adult and children education, and so on. Somebody's made reference to the fact here, one of the questions about a railway line being close to the plant and does that form part of the thinking regarding acquisitions going forward? 
Um, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Um, we try not to tie ourselves down to to any one thing being a key driver for an acquisition. So the railway line being being there, that's great, but it's not going to drive our focus on new gold mining projects up in the Lake Victorian gold fields or on the border with Uganda near Busia. It's That's not really under consideration, but broader logistics, absolutely. And where we can use our, our logistics and procurement base here in Nairobi to, to improve things at our new project opportunities, absolutely. Um, a few questions here on, on share price and how it's been struggling in recent weeks and um, people are struggling to understand why given the strong announcements which we've put out. There's been questions on whether it's been a big holder has had to sell um, or whether with you know the sentiment in the market about possible placings etc to fund acquisitions. Look we continue to review and see the the movement in our shareholding structures. There's been no major um, major seller out there and it's, it's been perplexing to watch and, and see some of those trades, um, very frustrating to see. Um, and particularly as we're, we're putting out positive news flow. So it's been disappointing, but I think as well, particularly with the reduced level of, of traded volumes over this period, I think it, it's representative of that broader market, that broader junior market where there has been money taken off the table from a number of very successful juniors. Um, as I said, and as I've chatted to one of the brokers today, the, the larger market indexes indices are, are performing very well. But you scratch beneath the surface and you look at any particular sectors, and our one in particular, you know, it, it's that junior sector, there's been a lot of that capital taken off the table um, and put elsewhere, either in cash or, or, or elsewhere. So, so yes, it's it's been frustrating to see. It's been concerning to see. But, look, we're, we're certainly not in it in this business. Uh, for one month, two months, three months, we've clearly got plans uh, and strategies which extend over months, years, and we're still in the early teenage years of implementing them. So I'd, I'd like to think the best is yet to come, and, you know, we, we're just starting off here. It's um, the, the final question we've got here is it appears that we wish to pursue multiple acquisitions but it remains unclear how we would look to fund them and how that would affect shareholders with dilutions. Um, have we considered curtailing the acquisition strategy or alternatively just be a little bit more clearer as to how we are going to be um, getting the uh, those acquisitions completed? We're unashamedly looking to grow this business. Um, we're not going to do it at the expense of shareholders. We're going to be smart in how we do these acquisitions. We're not going to do uh, meaningless dilution, far from it. The assets we're looking at, we feel we've been able to negotiate and secure on very advantageous terms, terms which I, I don't believe other companies uh, based out of the UK or Australia or Canada would have been able to achieve. Uh, we've achieved them because we're here on the ground and we, you know, we, we don't want to give up. We don't want to give things up. You know, we want to get things done properly. So when we've gone into these acquisitions, we're shareholders. You know, we don't want to see our holdings diluted. We don't want to see them reducing value. So when we're looking at these acquisitions, as I've said, we're looking at acquisition costs of three, four, five, six, seven dollars per resource ounce. Ounces which we believe should and will very quickly be valued at north of $50 an ounce. And that's purely just on an expiration um basis without taking into consideration the more advanced nature of some of these assets with feasibility studies complete with reserves with you know a lot of infrastructure in place so when we look at these acquisitions we're looking at them not for the sake of doing an acquisition but from we where we believe it will materially add value and not be dilutive how will we fund them clearly we're going to be looking to fund them from from our existing ability to generate cash flow but also to structure the right sort of acquisition facility in place. As a, as a pure exploration company, your only real avenue to raise, to raise capital is through the equity markets. As a producer with cash flow, with plant equipment, there's other ways of, of raising capital. So we as a board of directors have got to be smart. We've got to look at all avenues there. 
And we've got to look at using the, the debt side of the balance sheet, the equity side of the balance sheet, and putting them together and making sure we do it right. So when we look at the growth that we're going to do, we're not, we're not looking at doing it at the expense or to the detriment of shareholders' holdings. We're looking at it because what we see in front of us and what we've been able to secure ahead of our peers, ahead of our competitors, is something that we think is, like I say, going to add significant value to this company. We're not doing it to, to do more of the same. And I think I mentioned this in one of my other presentations. We're here. Each time we do something, we've got to improve. We've got to be doing something bigger, better, um, and not doing something just for the sake of doing something. It's There's nothing more demoralizing to, to management, to directors, to shareholders and investors when you keep doing the same thing. You know, you know, when I say keep doing the same thing, not looking at improving, not looking at getting something better. And, you know, we think we've got something bloody good at Kelly Mapesa, but at the same time, when we bring something else in there, it's got to be complement complementary. It's got to be of strategic importance. And so when we move ahead with these acquisitions, we have done a lot of work. We have sat down with... You know, we've looked at any number of projects over the past 12 months. And I think the ones which we've identified and will be moving on uh, very shortly are ones which we think will add, you know, significant value, not be diluted to shareholders and ones where shareholders and new investors alike can look at it and go, yep, these guys mean business. These guys have done a bloody smart deal. And these guys have a clear plan about how they're going to deliver. Okay, so that was the questions which have come through. I think I've, I've answered most of them in, in a fair bit of detail. Um, through our social media platforms, through our emails, we remain available and open to answer any questions, both privately and in a public forum. So please feel free to get back in touch with myself, Zach, when you can track him down, um, and both Simon and Alex here at ShareTalk. So thank you for this opportunity to present to you. Thank you. It's been great to, to answer these questions, but also to talk about the acquisitions. And um, I look forward to going into more detail on them once we've announced them through, um, through the platform. So thank you again and, and good evening. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.